Atlanta's Marxist land grab is what Joe Biden plans for the suburbs. Yeah. Look, my friends, I don't like the left at all. I'm anti-left more than I'm pro-right, but uh, <laughs> this, is, this is just silly. All right, let's read this. So uh, this is from uh, PJ Media. Stacey Lennox, Atlanta's Marxist land grab is a preview of Joe Biden's nefarious plans for the suburbs. And there's Keisha Lance Bottoms, our uh, highly esteemed mayor here. Um, she's got, I tell you, she was, uh, she's gotten a little bit heavy and a little bit uh, older. It's been a rough uh, term for her. She was attractive, actually, when she first came on board. But uh, anyway, all right, so she's opted not to run again for a, a disastrous year that placed her on the growing list of urban centers with alarming increases in crime. Uh, Bill White, chairman of the Buckhead City Council, they're trying to succeed from the city of Atlanta. Uh, and they'll probably, well, actually, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, look, I live in uh, Milton, which got Johns Creek, Alfred, and Milton, kind of like the North Fulton County suburbs. Uh, predominantly, though, I don't want to say predominantly white. Milton's predominantly white. Johns Creek, not so much. Alfred is very mixed. But this is more of the affluent part of North Fulton County. Essentially, we support North Fulton County with our property taxes. And uh, there's always been a uh, an underlying rumble to succeed from the uh, the Fulton County become our own county, Milton, Milton County or something like that. We'll, I, look, we'll see how that shakes out. I'll be long gone by the time that happens. But anyway, um, there's always and there's always a, a rumble uh, when you have more high-end people supporting low-end people in terms of tax revenue and whatnot. Um, you know, that's, look, I can't complain. Our services here in Fulton County are fine with me. I mean, I don't like the voting. I think the voting was uh, was fair and free. Uh, the cleanest election ever, according to our own Republican Secretary of State, freaking clown show. All right, so the goal, the group's primary goal is to increase law enforcement presence and remove limits placed on police by the mayor to patrol the city. The city. Okay, gotcha. However, in a move that bites the hand, Atlanta recommends moving to abolish the suburbs ahead of the Biden administration requiring the city to do so. A bucket is not what is traditionally called a suburb. It's actually literally in the city proper. I'm in the suburbs, which I'm not in Atlanta proper. I'm in Fulton County. Residents provide about 20% of the city's budget, and some of their children attend Atlanta public schools. However, it is an area primarily made up of single-family homes. Atlanta would like to change that. Single-family zoning comprises 63% of Atlanta's land area. In, May, in 2018, Mayor Bottom said her vision was, one Atlanta, a more affordable, resilient, and equitable city. Unfortunately, the recommend, recommendations buried in that text use the city's policies from 1929 as a model to increase population density. Yes, the proponents of these people call themselves progressive. They're using the model from 1929. What do they want to do? Isn't that interesting? So this is interesting. The recommendations buried in the text use the city's policies from 1929. What they want to do? End single-family zoning, allowing any property owner by right to build an additional dwelling called an accessory dwelling unit on any lot now zoned for family residents. Huh. End single-family zoning, i.e. allow property owners to build an additional dwelling Hmm. Allow the property owner by right to then subdivide the lot and sell the ADU separately on its own flag lot. Then presumably build another and repeat the process. Loosen the building requirements such as size and height for ADUs make them cheaper, encouraging the use of modular housing technology. <laughs> Reduce minimum lot sizes and minimum setbacks from the street to get more buildings onto every property. Allow any property owner within a half mile of MARTA station, that's our local subway, to build an apartment building with up to 12 units. And minimum residential parking requirements citywide so that new apartment condo, condos would not have to provide parking for their residents or for the residents requiring them to park on the streets. And minimum parking requirements for commercial properties, allowing them to occupy more of a given area. Uh, so I'm hearing a lot of End requirements, lucid requirements, allow. That's a libertarian dream, man. Property ownership is the foundation of all capitalism. Private property. It, do whatever the hell you want on your property as long as you're not bothering anybody else. This is not to decline the suburbs. And the interesting thing is, and I don't know who the mayor was in 1929, I've assume, I assume it's uh, a heavily segregated city, 
with a heavily white mayor and that white city council that certainly weren't pro-black. And they wanted to do this. Why? And that, I, 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 I have no qualm with this. There's an old libertarian study back in the 80s or 90s. And I, James Bovard, maybe? I forgot who it was. Or maybe Perk the, uh, out of Bozeman, Montana. The, uh, I can't remember what Perk stands for. Environmental Resource Council. I can't remember. But anyway, who showed about Houston, Houston lack of zoning laws and how that led to equity or freedom and equity and low prices. I guarantee Atlanta is looking at that. I just, I hate this from the quote, libertarian right or right saying, oh my goodness, they're going to allow people to do more of their property. I, I just, I find this to be horrific as a, uh, as a challenge to the orthodox that the left, whatever the left does is bad. And thus we got to oppose it, even though it leads to more freedoms for private property owners. I, I it's mind boggling to me, but Josh, what if someone built a freaking, you know, an ADU next to you? That's their property, man. They do whatever the hell they want, as long as it doesn't impact me. What impacts you with the noise? It impacts, well, <clears throat> then you know what I can do? I can move. I mean, that, I can buy that property. Oh, you can't afford it. This is where private property is awesome. You don't like it? You freaking buy the property. You don't like it? You move. It's that simple. This is not to destroy the suburbs, man. This is to, to the setbacks, the minimum zoning laws, the freaking HOAs, all that stuff is a violation of private property. Now, I have an HOA. I can't fly any flag other than a American flag. I can't put a freaking Trump sticker. You couldn't put a Obama sticker or not sticker, yard sign. I think that's stupid, but I signed on to it willingly knowing that I'm buying this neighborhood. That was my choice. I sacrificed my rights by choice. But anytime you're expanding private property rights, that's a good thing. This doesn't destroy the suburbs. Silly. Silly. This is very, very elitist on this guy's part. Stacey Lennox is a man. I'm sure it's a man. Anyway, don't fall for the fear-mongering from the right. I will see you.